Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to continue building out our HMI program, adding some trends to our screen. In this video, we are using our industrial control panel trainer with the HMI option. Also, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any suggestions you have for this HMI series, be sure to put them down in the comments because we are taking your suggestions to build out this series. In our previous videos, first we configured our tags and communications, and then we added these start-stop buttons. And then in the last video, we added this analog gauge to read our drive speed, plus our bus voltage, motor voltage, and motor amps. And then we gave ourselves a way to change the speed, either by entering a value, change our speed, or use our increase and decrease buttons to bump the speed up and down. So that makes it where when we press the start button, we can watch the gauge go up. When we press the stop button, we can see it go down. But a lot of times it's nice to be able to see a historical view of what it's done in the past. So that's what we're going to add now is we're going to add a trend. So we're going to go to our toolbox and we will scroll down to the display area and we're going to find trend. We'll just drag that over. And let's go ahead and drag it all the way out. We'll make it a little wider. There we go, that looks pretty nice there. Now in my case, I don't want this trend to be the whole screen. And you see we have these stars down here, which will kind of stump you at first. But if we were to drag the screen up higher, there's text actually down there. And the issue is with the height that I want it, this text is gonna be too small. So let's click our properties tab and let's find our font height for our labels that's going to be right here let's change it let's try 25. there we go okay so now we have values down here and that'll make everything legible and now let's double click our trend and on our read tag let's select our actual speed okay and let's download this program and see what it does Okay, so now we have our trend bar. We're going to press the start button. Now we can see our line going up. And we could change this to 50. And yeah, it goes back down. But I think this trend could use some improvements. Is first, the white pen that we're using kind of conflicts with the white lines of our grid. So what I want to do first is I want to change the color of this. And also, even then, this line seems a little thin to me. In other words, if I was glancing from a distance, I don't think I could see this. So let's go in and talk about how we can change the way our pins look. So we're going to double click on our graph and right here, appearance line color. Let's change that and let's go with a dark blue. And then we have appearance line width. Let's change that. Let's try five. And also, I'm not going to do it, but just so you know, you can actually make a dashed line also. And yeah, maybe we will do that, but let's, let's wait a second on that. Let's go ahead and get this. Let's download this program. Okay, so there is our line down there. That still seems a little bit weak to me when it's um, sitting at zero, but let's hit our start button. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's okay. It, it looked a little low at the bottom, but yeah. All right. So now that's much more visible and mainly, okay, we had it 50%. And it's much clearer now that it isn't just the center line. That thing is actually running at 50%. Now let's say that on our graph, we want a min and a max because usually, you know, you're graphing something and you'll want it to be within a range. Well, not all tags actually have to come from the PLC. You can also have internal tags. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our tag manager. And we've been working in the first tab here, which is the external tag. So that means things external to HMI that we're communicating with. But there's actually four tabs up here. So we have the memory tab, which is actually what we're going to use. We also have the system tab. And this gives you some information, mainly some status things that you can use in your program, such as the time, the current screen, and we may do some things with it later. 
And then we have global connections, and we are going to do a video on some of these. But right now, let's get back to that memory tab, and let's click Add. And we're going to call this our max speed. And we'll make it a real since our actual speed is a real. And then you have this retain value. And what that is going to do is it's going to remember it when we cycle power something. So actually, let's, or let's check the retain value on this one. And then let's add another one. And let's call this the min speed. And we'll also make it a real, but let's not check that retain value, just so you can see the difference. Now let's get back to our screen and let's go to our toolbox and scroll and find the numeric entry. So again, we don't want this numeric display. We wanna find the numeric entry. Let's drag it down and then let's click properties. And actually, you know, I didn't do that the easiest way and that's not the way I would do it. Um, you know, we just created another one, but we already have one that's already formatted the way we want right here. So typically, I would right click copy and then right click paste. And that way for consistency's purpose, this is gonna look exactly the same as this. So let's take that one out. And let's get a properties. And instead of speed command, here we're gonna want that max speed. And we're also, the right tag is gonna be the max speed. And then let's copy and paste that again. And this time, let's make properties on this one, the min speed. And we'll call this one the min speed. Okay, in the next video, we're actually gonna start organizing this into screens, but I wanted to get it to a point that we needed screens. So you're gonna look at this and be like, whoa, that's really garbled, but it's okay. We're gonna fix that next. But now let's highlight the speed here and just copy and paste it. Mainly just so I can remember that this is gonna be the max speed. And then this one is our minimum speed. And I say, yeah, I know that's getting sloppy, but that's because next video, we're gonna start talking a little more about how to lay out the screen and you know how to organize it. But now let's go back to and double click our trend and we're gonna add two more pins. Now in this case, we want the min speed and we want to add another one, and we want it to be the max speed. And let's go ahead and download that. First, let's put some values in our min speed and max speed. So let's put our max speed at 75. And you see the line, one of the lines immediately jumped up to 75. And let's put our min speed at 25. All right, now we have a second line at 25. We're going to hit our start button. All right, and we can see it going up. And we have our three values. Now, the first thing you see is obviously it's really difficult to distinguish these three lines. So let's format these lines so that they're different now. So let's double click our trend again. And we have this min speed and max speed. Now, they're not what we primarily want to pay attention to. So in this case, this is a time that we don't want it as loud. And that's why I go and I see a lot of HMIs where everything is so loud that you can't figure out exactly what you're supposed to be paying attention to. So we want this to be a little milder. And so one thing we can do to help that is when we'll put this back at a line weight of one on both of those because we really want to pay attention to this actual speed and also here's where i would use the dashed lines so we're going to make the min speed and max speed both dashed lines and then we want to change the color of them and again guys i'm not a great color picker but for this case i'm just going to make these that white right there so that'll be white this one will be white and let's download this and talk about a couple things. Okay, so first, notice, even though we have a retained max speed, when we download the program, 
it did clear out. So first, let's put that back in. That'll be 75, and our min speed will be 25. Okay, and see now, it's kind of giving us a nice kind of guide that kind of matches our center line, but it's not so bold that we can't know what to pay attention to. So now we'll hit our start button, and we can see our blue line come up. Yeah, and now, we know where our min and where our max are. And if we drop down, uh, we'll just change the speed. Let's say we go to 20. And yeah, we're gonna see, uh, all right, we're now below it. So that gives us a good indication. Now, ultimately, I do not think I like the colors that I made these dashed lines, but obviously we could play with those later. But that gives you a good idea about that. And so let's talk about these two values because obviously they went to zero. So looking back at our tags, we had checked the retained value here. So what I wanna do now is I want to cycle the power on our HMI and see what it looks like when we power it back up. Now we're powered back up. You see our max speed, we still have 75 in, but see our min speed is now blank. Also, notice that it doesn't show a value at all, and I don't like that. So first, let's fix this. So let's go to our tag editor, and on our min speed here, let's put an initial value in. And I really think there should be a different way to do this. This is the only way I've figured it out. So if I put a zero right there on the initial value, well, actually, we're gonna, in a second, we're going to change it. No, let's, let's stick with a zero just so we can see that this works. Now let's download this program. Now notice, well, one, when we download, we lost that retained value. So every time you download, you lose the retained value. But now that we have an initial value into our min speed, it does show zero. So now that we know we want our min and max speed to be 25 and 75, at least initially, we can put those in there so that we don't have to enter them every time. So we're gonna go back to tags and our initial value for our max speed is gonna be 75, and our initial value for our min speed is gonna be 25. So let's go ahead and download that. Okay, and so now on download, we have that max speed and that min speed, and we can change them still. So I could make that 80 now, if we decide later on that that's better, but that'll make it where every time that we download, we won't have to enter it. Now let's cycle power one more time, just so we can understand the difference between retained and not retained. Because right now our max speed is in retained memory and our min speed is not. So we're gonna cycle power now. And okay, initially it looks like it retained both of them because we're at 80 and our min speed was at 25. But now watch this, because this is important is now I'm gonna change our min speed to 15. So it's at 15, so we're remember, we're at 80 and 15, and now let's cycle power one more time. Okay, so we were at 80 and 15. Notice that our minimum speed went back to its initial value. So that's the difference between retained and not retained memory in the HMI. Retained is gonna retain whatever value it had in it before the power is cycled. Not retained is gonna go back to its initial value. Now in this case, there is not a good or a bad. It could be that when you cycle power, you do wanna retain a particular value that you know is a default value. But in other cases, you do want to check that retain box. That way it will remember from power cycle to power cycle what it was. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop with the trends. And okay, we actually covered trends, but we also covered a little bit about memory retention. And so now our screen is starting to get a little messy. It's getting a little busy because, all right, we, we needed some settings down here. And, you know, now we've got our trend and yeah, it's getting a little busy to where we're gonna need some navigation. We're gonna need to start breaking this into multiple screens. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to create and navigate multiple screens. We also, thank you for the suggestion, we are gonna cover some alarming. So what do we got? We have printing, we have alarming. Uh, I probably should put a list down in the description of what we do have so far. 
So please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Phil. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.